Aloha and welcome back to another episode of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Chantel Seville. Now today I'm very excited because I want to help you land your dream job and live the life you always imagined. And that's why I've invited to the show today the extraordinarily talented career coach, Kylie Butler. She's all the way from Sydney, Australia. Now before I introduce her, I'd just like to uh, share a bit more with you about what you can expect in this episode. So we'll firstly learn about Kylie's journey to becoming a career coach and founding Inspired Careers. Secondly, we'll find out a bit about what careers are out there that you might not have heard of and probably weren't around when your parents were your age, no matter how old you are. And then we'll go on to some success stories so that you too can realize that your dreams are possible. So Kylie will share some success stories of her clients. And last but not least, and most importantly, do stay tuned for the whole episode because in the second segment, Kylie's going to share all kinds of her wealth of knowledge, tips and tricks about how you can land your dream job. So without further ado, welcome Kylie. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Ever since we met, you know, a while back there, I was just so inspired because, you know, I'm all about bringing out the best in people and really wanting them to live their purpose and their dream job, but that's not my, my purpose is not exactly to coach them there, so it is yours, and that's why I thought, who better to get on the show than Kylie, so we can all get on track, whether you're 12 and don't know what you want to do, or 50 and wanting to change careers, I know you're the woman that can help, so uh, can you please share, how did you start your journey? Wow, okay, well, uh, let me try and make this story brief, because it's a little <laughs> bit of a long story. Um, because, yeah, I've got 20 years experience now. I often just say that kind of say 15 plus, <laughs> but it's actually Since more you like were five. 20, so. <laughs> Since you were so five, like, so you're 25 now. <laughs> <laughs> so my journey, uh, my journey actually started in recruitment, so um, agency recruitment. And I started out with very altruistic motives, so I really wanted to help people. But for most people who've worked with recruitment agencies, you'll kind of find that that's not really the nature in which many of them kind of operate. So I spent a few great years though doing agency recruitment placing people in jobs and I love that and then um, yeah the tra travel bug hit me went overseas I worked in London in Dublin I worked in Rome I moved into generalist recruitment um, and then um, sorry generalist HR learning and development I worked on grad recruitment development programs um, came back to Australia but you know wanted to get more into internal work um, because recruitment can be quite sales based. And then I worked within businesses on um, strategic talent acquisition. And um, and I kind of worked my way up and I found there was a real values misalignment with one of the companies that I was working crazily for. And, um, and I thought, okay, well, how else can I take my talents to the world? You know, I'm uh, I have all these skills and I know exactly what it takes to get to be the selected as a top candidate. How can I use my skills for good, not evil? So that's when I launched um, Inspired Careers. And, um, and I started out doing some coaching and I was also consulting to businesses at the same time, helping them with their recruitment and their selection processes. And I got lured back into the corporate world and um, took on a couple of big um, HR leadership roles, one for a global social media uh, business and another one for comms. And then the universe gave me a little bit of another nudge and said, no, you need to be taking your talents to the world in a different way. And I relaunched Inspired uh, inspired Careers. And yeah, so that's that's what I do now. So I, I help people get basically kind of my clients fall into two camps. Firstly, people who really want to get clear on the type of role that is really going to light them up from the inside. So whether they're, you know, uh, you know, at still at school, at uni, recent grad, um, changing careers, getting back into the workforce after having children, or or there's a people who just want to get savvy with their job search. So rather than kind of you know fishing around in the um, kind of the job pools and you know tra trawling through the job sites, they want to get really clear and know how to do a competency based interview, know what a great CV looks like, and just get out there and, and get there dream job. So I help them with that. And then I also do a lot with LinkedIn as well. So I've got another standalone site, which develops with a team of writers that sit behind it that develop LinkedIn profiles, because that's an incredibly powerful way to, to now get found for work. So kind of cut out that whole um, terrible hunting process. And um, yeah, I so think that the, that's the LinkedIn that's profiles. <laughs> I can't wait to share that a little bit more in the in the second segment, because really, I mean, the days of trying to hunt and look for something you don't know what it is, and, and for myself, it's all about being who, who you are. So if you can be who you are and people could find you for that, that's revolutionary. <laughs> so it you're, is. you're really on to something with that for sure. With, um, mm. with all the different careers you've seen, because I know, especially young people, they're kind of thinking, they don't know what they want to do because they don't realize 
the extraordinary amount of careers and types of careers that are out there. So can you share some that you've seen on, you know, some titles and, and just the most interesting ones that perhaps can open people's minds to what's really out there for them and perhaps even where they might find them? Uh, look, there is so there are so many new roles. I mean, firstly, there's um, obviously a lot in the digital space because you know, 20, 30 years ago, I mean, we we're only just kind of moving into all having um, computers on our um, you know our own PCs at work. So, um, and obviously, the World Wide Web has happened. So there are so many digital roles, but also so many specialist roles. So even if I think. Um, so if, like in every single area. So when I tell people that I work on employment branding, they're like, employment branding? Like that's a job. Um, but some of the, some of the exciting roles that I um, that I've recruited for and that I know of and that I know people that are in, creative technologist. That's a that's a great one. It's a little mix between kind of strategy, IT, marketing, um, a community manager. So lots of fun roles in social media. Lots of great ones there. So managing. So for example, Coca Cola have a um, a Facebook page. You know, it's not somebody from Coca. Oh, it may be someone from Coca Cola, but it's <laughs> it's not. Uh, it's often outsourced to an agency that would do that. So people manage um, uh, communities across um, different social channels. Um, connections designer, SEO specialist, an app developer. You can be a big data analyst. People will, will, uh, love to get really um, into their data these days and find insights. Um, sustainability director, obviously with the move towards. Um, um, really caring for the environment and a lot of Gen Ys really, it's important for them in their job choice that an organisation has a, a sustainability policy. Um, so you could be internally as a sustainability director within a large corporate. Um, you could be a vlogger, so like a blogger but video. Um, you could be a blog, you could be a blogger, but that's I mean everyone knows about bloggers. You could be a vlogger. Um, you could be a UX designer, so um, designing the user experience on websites. Um, yeah, there are so many exciting new jobs out there. And that's even that's in digital. And as as you've said, that's that's where a lot of um, where you know society is going. For someone who is looking at doing one of these jobs, like where do they actually even find them, or what do they study to get to them, or how does that work? Well, look, it, it's interesting because obviously, you know, there's not a uni degree to be a vlogger or there's not a uni degree, um, you know, to be a, an app developer. So that's the interesting thing because we used to have these kind of quite um, linear paths. You know, people talked about, you know, the career ladder and you kind of went up, 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 up in this direction. Um, but now it's kind of more of a matrix. We kind of go across and we weave our way across. And so, I mean, in terms of the, the tech roles, there's obviously, um, you know, you can do a um, you know IT degree at uni, and then there are specialist courses um, at different colleges around some of the specific skills. Um, you'll find that there are um, certainly in Australia and across the world, yeah, specialist. Um, as these new roles are emerging, there are um, more not so much um, universities. They'll give, they can still give you some great core skills, but there are um, lots of different um, learning institutions that will gi are giving you kind of specific give you some of those specific skills. But sometimes it's really about learning on the job. I think um, the smarter, prog most, more progressive employers look more for attitude than skill, because you can always train technical skill. If somebody has self-awareness and learning agility, then, um, then you know, they can learn those skills. So attitude still is more and more important. And the smarter employers are getting a lot better at um, interviewing for competencies such as self-awareness, learning agility, your ability to develop relationships, your, Ability to have you know analytical skills if it was a big data role, looking for those core competencies more than the technical skills, and then you can get trained in those. And the great thing about that is actually you get self development, so you're you're becoming mm -hmm. a better person with your own personal growth as well as doing something that actually interests and inspires you. So that's, I mean, I think that's a good thing for people in general, as you and I are yeah. both passionate about people. So. Um, Absolutely. Well, if, I mean, Google's all, always put up as kind of the, the big example, but um, uh, they have developed an internal program that was developed by an engineer called Search Inside Yourself, and that is all about um, meditation and how you bring it into into the workplace. So, tra essentially, training your mind. And 
Um, so, I mean, yeah, the progressive employers are very, very focused on um, personal development because, I mean, if you're really smart, if somebody's, a, for, I mean, for it's a smart strategy for an organisation because a, they're investing in you, and then you, you, I mean, you invest in them more. It makes you stickier as an employee, more likely to stay with them. So that investment kind of they get to benefit from, and um, and yeah, you are getting, you are developing more as a person, and you're a better person working in their in their workplace more engaged, getting along better with people. And uh, I just want to, before we have the break, because we've got a little bit of time, but before the break, I want, I'd love if you could share some success stories, perhaps of your clients that have gone from doing a completely different career or someone who's just knew, knew what they wanted and landed a dream job. Any exciting stories you can share so people could relate to perhaps realizing their dreams are possible? Yeah, sure. I mean, I um, because obviously we had we had a bit of a chat before we came online. I'm thinking, oh, which story should which client should I should I talk about? Because there are so many interesting journeys. And as I said, you know, there's so many exciting new roles out there now too. Um, if I think of one of my um, one of my clients, she studied um, law. And I, I think that um, it was probably her parents who gave her a little bit of a nudge that that's what she needed to do. Um, but she really was passionate about writing. So um, these days, a lot of people don't, you don't necessarily need to have a journalism degree anymore to actually get a writing job. So she just started applying for, for jobs that she saw on a, there's a, you know, a fun site called Pedestrian TV here in Australia, which has got lots of kind of creative roles on it. And um, yeah, picked up a job doing um, some writing and then picked up another role doing some legal editing so she's she's doing this amazing thing because she's she's not actually going down the poor writer's path and <laughs> no, nothing against anyone who has chosen that path um, but she's got this now this blend of doing some more kind of creative writing and using her legal editing skills um, I've got um, another another girl great little story she studied um, psychology and then um, got her foot in the door in a um, was, was trying to get in, into HR initially because that's where she thought she'd take her psych skills and couldn't find a job got an internship from that internship got a foot in the door a really great business and then thought oh no I actually like social media so she moved over and did another internship in social and um, yeah and now got a job as a um, as a social media manager. So, and that all happened relatively, relatively fast for her. Another great story, um, one of my favorite clients of all time, she, um, I shouldn't have favorites, should I? But she's a <laughs> lot, really, I mean, everyone. We're not mentioning awesome. names, so it's okay. I mean, that said, I'm, I'm, I feel really blessed because I do get to work with a lot of amazing people because the type of people who really want to invest in themselves and get really clear on what it is that drives them, what are their values and what talents they have to bring to the world are uh, generally, you know, are pretty great people. And um, so this particular client studied fashion and journalism and um, and she was a little bit like, oh, where do I go with this? Where do I take these skills? And um, and she moved into doing um, fashion writing. She worked for one of the really big online um, ASOS, um, one of the big online fashion retailers. And um, yeah, and she's just kind of just gone gangbusters with her career from there. Yeah, getting headhunted all over the place. It's so interesting, like the different stories that you tell of the different paths, as you mentioned, and especially the psychology one, that's quite interesting. Psychology to social media, you think, where are the... <laughs> but really, I mean, in, when I studied marketing, buyer behavior is huge. So if you can understand the psychology oh, of people, absolutely. imagine how much that brings to the social media space that the other candidate going for that position, who might even have experience in social media, doesn't know. So that's... That's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, like even the psychology of, of, um, of social sharing, you know, like it's fascinating. You really need to get into the buyer's mind to understand, you know, to put together a really smart strategy in that space. So, yeah, although it wouldn't seem like a really kind of natural link when you first think about it, it really, it really does make sense. And there are a lot of connections like that. That's obviously just one. And this way, when you can, obviously, when you see your clients or you see people and meet them, you can actually probably see what their talent is and relate it to another career that they might not even thought of or heard of, but yet they're so perfect for it. And I think that that's the beauty of you and your skill and, and what you do, because you can bring out these hidden talents in people that are actually their biggest shining talent. Yeah. And, and that's when you do, um, now that you've started doing the LinkedIn profiles and doing your coaching courses online and, and all these different types of things just to open people's minds. So that's something that excites me so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it is exciting. Because I've worked in like internal recruitment and generalist, I know, mm -hmm. you know, what, you know, how, what, you know, how many, many career avenues there really are in terms of, you know, legal, finance, IT, marketing, 
know, there are so many different opportunities. So sometimes I'll see someone and they've gone down a particular path, they've got really strong analytical skills and, and they've also got um, a bit of sales skills. I'm like, oh, commercial finance analyst, perfect. So yeah, there are some amazing new roles out there and um, yeah, lots of opportunities to get excited because there's, you can take your skills to the world in, in so many different ways now, um, rather than, get, you know, before you think, okay, finance, accountant. Okay, and, that, and, that, and, that, and that's what you did. But now there are so many other, you know, new and exciting ways that you can use, take those accounting skills, um, yeah, out into the world. And what's even more new and exciting is what we're going to do after the episode when we come back and share all your tips and tricks and knowledge and how we can get to living and having our dream jobs, like this one. Um, and, <laughs> and with that, be sure if you like, you can always tweet us or you can give us a call on the Think Tech Hawaii hotline and ask our specialist Kylie some questions because she's not that accessible uh, unless you're her coaching client. So be sure to uh, take this opportunity and we'll look forward to seeing you after the break. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome. We are co-hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha! For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We are uh, here live on Mondays at 3 p.m. and we bring guests like our best health coach, Elena Maganto. Uh, eat well and follow her tips. Viva la comida saludable! Aloha! Welcome back to the second segment of the Savvy Chicks TV show. We're here every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Honolulu time, so be sure to watch us. And also, if you miss an episode or if you're just catching us, be sure to go to the Savvy Chicks website. You can see all the previous episodes there, as well as the Think Tech Hawaii YouTube. Um, you can see all of what Think Tech Hawaii does there, too. So, welcome back, Kylie Butler. We're going to talk more about careers and how to land your dream job and basically be the best person you be and live a life you love. So, uh, let's, let's get back to it, Kylie. Okay. Well, now, what I want to know, what everyone wants to know, what are some good, you know, tips, tricks, some knowledge you can share to really get everyone inspired to want to go out there and, you know, if they're in a mundane job or they're not sure what they want to do when they finish school, to really get them thinking about the next steps? Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. So, the first thing um, that I would suggest anyone does is, is get really clear on who they are and then what they want. So often people, when they find themselves in a position where they're like really unsure about what that next career move should look like or, or even what that next job should look like if, you, if you're clear on your you know, kind of career path, generally that uncertainty comes because there is a lack of clarity around um, who you are often. So sometimes it's just really about connecting back into who you are and what really matters to you. And this is also, um, something that I see quite often when people have unsuccessful job searches in terms of uh, unsuccessful as they don't find the career or the job they're after, or they do find it, but it's, it's not one that satisfies them, is they skip this piece of work. And that is around getting really clear on who you are, what your values are, what your unique talents are, what your passions are, and really what lights you up from the inside. So um, there are many ways to do this. One is um, firstly, if you don't have a daily meditation practice, I would say um, get clear on that because you do need some time to be really still with yourself, to really connect to your inner insight and wisdom to get clarity over what really matters to you. So um, often when I, I've got a podcast myself and often when I interview people, I joke and say sometimes it's like I scripted these podcasts because all of these successful people tell the same story around they had this moment at this particular minute where they had this epiphany and it was when they got really clear, they were, it was like a sunset moment or something where they were right in, right in that present moment and totally connected to who they are and that's when they got real clarity around the decision they were making was the right one what decision to make you know so firstly get still and get really clear um uh, connect to, to who you are and your innate wisdom um and then you need to put pen to paper or you know tap on the keyboard some people say it's um it's better actually writing these things down but um whatever works for you use an app whatever but 
get find out firstly what your values are now you can do um if, you can even do some googles there's free values assessments online all over the shop but get really clear on what your core values are because with any role that's something that you can't compromise on so if your top value is being honest or you know it's integrity then if you go to work for an organization and your boss is just a little bit dodgy or a little bit shifty you're never going to feel comfortable there but if you're someone that one of your top values is around you know is it like a, is an economic value and um you know commercials and something that drives you more um, than say somebody who is more altruistic then you know that, that actually doesn't matter so much and you know what it is important that you get the corner office but often people go into the job search too early without getting clear on these things and they get dazzled by what's shiny and new so they're like oh car you know oh corner <laughs> office you know oh yeah, I have these perks fantastic but they didn't factor in that really work life balance is more important to them because they've you know they've got the kids or or, or they're planning to have children or, or whatever it is so firstly take the time out to get really clear on what your values are what what puts you in flow like when do you get really lost in a task think about moments in your life uh, in work or outside of work where you just get so caught up that the joy is not necessarily about the outcome of the task but the actual task itself you get um, like immense joy from so when are you in flow what are your values what are what did you want to be when you were younger what were you before society told you that you couldn't be an astronaut or you couldn't own a zoo you know what, what did you really want to be so there's i mean there are lots of different schools of thinking but sometimes people say um uh, at about 11 what did you want to be so call your mum text your mum now and say what well, mum when i was little you know what did i want to be or what was unique about me was it you were playing or whatever you know for some people it's very clear i did a podcast interview the other day with a girl who was a um who is a singer and a musician and she said that she got a saxophone when she was really young and went off and taught herself basically all of the nursery nursery rhymes and then came back sat her mum down and gave her a show you know so some people it's, it's you know it just is you know they know but they're kind of for the majority of us that's not the case we need to do a bit of soul searching on you know really what does excite us and what lights us up from the inside what unique talents do we have you know what do we get really passionate about what are our interests now i will also throw out a little bit of a disclaimer here and say it's not quite as straightforward as just follow your passion oh you love cooking yay you know open up start start cooking from home and run your own business you know that might not work if you're somebody who's very risk averse so you need to get really clear on these things that really matter to you because running your own business, even if you are an incredibly talented um, cook, requires a whole different skill set. So firstly, get really clear and then make that decision. Okay, well, what do I love about cooking? Well, I love you know coming up with concepts for new ideas. Well, how can you apply that to your career and then also use some of your other competencies? So you might be great at sales and business development, but you'll get a role where ideation is part of the role so it doesn't need to be really as linear as you know um, you know I, I, I paint I'm going to be a painter you know <laughs> you can how do you take those creative skills to the world and that's where I can kind of help with that so get clear on your values get clear on your passions when will you in flow what are your, your unique skills and then look at the current marketplace and look at potential applications for those so yeah you can work with a coach or you could you know talk to recruiters you can do your own desktop um, research in terms of how you take those talents to the world that's the first thing i would say the next thing i would say is also when you go to actually okay, so you're ready you're pretty clear on what the few of those kind of career options would be you know what lights you up from the inside then you know be savvy don't just kind of mill around in the job boards firstly put it out there put it out there to the universe so tell people what you're looking for networks are so powerful i've got a kind of dual relationship with the word networking because the old school kind of idea of networking where people are kind of you know uh, you know flinging around business cards at you know at events i'm so call me call me call me call me, call me. <laughs> i don't exactly because that's all and that's where when anybody approaches a networking um kind of event or activity with i'm going to sell myself that doesn't work you've got to go to any of these kind of opportunities to meet other people and say well and listen and learn about other people and say well how can i help you and and connect to other people and and say you know this put it out there this is what i'm looking for and i think that way when you go into well like any relationship it's you know it's not all about um me 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 and can you help me it's you know how can i help you and how can i connect you and so 
I think first, you know, put it out there and get out there. So, you know, um, just let your LinkedIn network know that you're looking. Obviously, if you're in a role, you might need to, um, you know, and you don't want your employer you know, to know, you might need to be a little bit discreet about this. But obviously, with people that you trust, old colleagues that you trust, um, you know, let them know that you're, that you're looking and, yeah, reach out to your networks because it's amazing, you know. And sometimes you know, somebody might not be looking for, um, uh, whatever that role is that you're looking for right now, market, a marketing manager, but then you put it out there and they're like, actually, well, we were going to recruit for one of those in you know six months. We think you'd be perfect for our company. Because often people, or smart organisations are looking for cultural fit as well. Um, and some sometimes, you know, it's more important than even, you know, the technical skills, as I mentioned, that can be trained, you can be trained on. So um, if you just put it out there, you'd be amazed what opportunities um, arise. And then, if you are actually doing kind of active recruitment um, on the you know on the job boards and applying for jobs, then get a CV that look look good on paper, in person, and online. So, firstly, Google yourself what comes up uh, because. <laughs> Um, your, your potential employers will be Googling you, recruiters will be Googling you. And um, so if, you're, if you don't have your security settings locked down on Facebook, then that could be a problem. It's, it's, it's amazing how many um, people have missed out on opportunities because uh, their online profile, you know, nobody needs to see you at a Bucks or a Hands Party, you know. They, they just, so first you Google yourself, see what comes up, lock down those settings on your um, personal um, social um, networks and um, and make sure that LinkedIn is generally the first or second um, even if you've got your own web page um, the, the Google al algorithm seems to pick up um, LinkedIn is only one of the top search results so make sure your LinkedIn profile is really great we can get to that I can talk to more, more LinkedIn strategy but firstly just clean it up make sure that you do look good online there's nothing there that is compromising um, with your CV get it done by a graphic designer if you have a CV that's in the Times Roman font don't even bother sending it out, basically, because for anyone who screens lots of CVs, when you see a CV like that, they haven't even changed from the generic font. You're like, lazy, next. Um, <laughs> so it really well, does matter. So if, if you think about it, when you're Googling and you are looking for something, say you're looking for your next, hol your next holiday in, you know, overseas, and you land on an ugly website, how long do you stay there? Not very long. You move, it's the same with CVs. They've got to look good. And, so, and I, I hate to cut you off, Kylie, because I want you here on the show for the rest of the day. But it's literally <laughs> nearly time to wrap up. And that's how fast time goes when you're doing what you love. But when it comes to appearance, I mean, we're putting up your websites now. And for those of you who are hung on this show like I am, glued, wanting to hear the next thing she's going to say, <laughs> I guess that means you're going to have to go to the website and connect with her. And you can always, you know... Um, I guess, message and, and add to your communities and check out. You have lots of free resources where you can offer Loads more resources. information that we yeah. haven't. The LinkedIn profiles, be sure to, when you go on the Inspired Careers website, be sure to link to her LinkedIn profiles because I just think that they are incredible and a great way to invest, especially if you don't want to spend a lot on a new website, but you know your talent, you want to get out there. Um, just a really quick, because we are going to wrap up, what is your best advice for a young woman who's either in school, like school, high school, any um, sort of thing, how to follow, just a real quick snippet, how to follow their passion? How to follow their passion? Take time out to get really clear on what, what, what your values are, what matters to you, and invest in your own personal growth. So your growth from the in, internally, your personal development will be reflected in the outside world. So if you invest in that confidence and self-belief, then the world is your oyster. Oh, you're so amazing. I absolutely love it. Gives me goosebumps. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the Savvy Chick Show today. For those oh, of you who love this, watch her again. You know, watch this replay because it's one of the best shows we've done and you've, you've offered so much knowledge. So thank you so much, Kylie. We'll have you again soon and um, look forward to seeing you in Sydney. My pleasure. I look forward to seeing you too. Aloha.